Well, welcome uh, to today's webinar. Thanks for joining us. And today's uh, topic is data summary and analysis in Jump. In fact, I'll be using Jump 13 today. And we've just released uh, the upgrade to Jump 13.1. So if you're using Jump 13 uh, to upgrade to Jump 13.1, uh, you can go to preferences and then jump update and click check now or go to our website and look for software updates i'll be using jump pro throughout this webinar uh, but most of the features that we'll talk about are native to jump as well uh, for a quick summary of what's available in jump 13 versus jump 13 pro i'll use the jump starter and the jump starter is under window if you're running on mac or under view if you're using a Windows machine. And I'll be using a Mac throughout this, this webinar. So the Jump Starter provides a high-level summary of all of the features uh, and options within Jump. So as we scroll through the list, you'll see uh, buttons with descriptions. And some of these items are specific to Jump Pro. So as we get down through into predictive modeling and specialized modeling, you see that a lot of these are inherent to Jump Pro rather than Jump. Well, most of what we'll talk about today is native to Jump. Now, if you don't have Jump, you can see various uh, options for getting Jump at jump.com slash getjump, and this is our academic licensing page. But you may already have access to Jump through your campus license. Uh, if you have any questions, Chuck London can help. Uh, and if you are using Jump for institutional use or you're an academic researcher, uh, contact Pawnee Allen. So before we get started, I just want to point out some of the resources for uh, learning Jump and for using Jump. And an invaluable resource that's built right into Jump is the Help menu. So the Help menu has a searchable help, so if you have questions on any topic in Jump, you'll find rich details here, and this is browser-based. You'll also find PDF books uh, of all of the features in Jump, and these are quite detailed. Uh, the Jump documentation library will open up all of the books at one time. The sample data library contains rich resource of data sets. In fact, I'll be using data sets from this sample data library uh, today. If you're brand new to Jump 13, new features will highlight features that have been added in Jump 13 in this newest release. If you have questions, you're looking for data sets, or uh, would like to engage in discussions about uh, particular types of analyses, the Jump user community has thousands of users worldwide uh, who have uh, rich technical skills, abilities, and knowledge in different fields. Uh, so you'll find that a lot of really nice resources here. And if you have questions on output or you encounter any issues, uh, this Contact Jump technical support, we have world-class technical support, and this will uh, initiate an email that you can uh, write them directly. Now another invaluable resource that I want to point out before we get going is our resources library. So if we go to jump.com slash teach, this brings us to our academic landing page. And at the bottom of this academic landing page is a variety of resources for learning and using Jump. So you'll see a variety of getting started videos. These are great for first time users uh, as you're just getting started with Jump. Recorded webinars, um, and then you've got the live academic webinars, and this is one of those live academic webinars, but this will give you the schedule for all of our webinars throughout the spring semester. Um, after this webinar, we are actually recording and we'll post the webinar and also the journal that I'm using here in the academic webinar library. And you'll find past webinars of a variety of different topics that are posted here. If you're looking for help on a particular topic, for example, how do I do X in Jump, the learning library has a rich array of resources, including one page guides, short videos, and tutorials on a variety of different topics. So if you have a chance, check out uh, our resources for learning and using Jump at jump.com slash teach. So let's go ahead and get started. So the overall agenda today, we're going to talk about how to summarize and graph data in Jump. And if you've seen the Jump basics for professors and students, this will be somewhat of a review, but we'll go rather quickly. We'll spend a good amount of time on basic analysis in Jump. So this involves analyses involving one variable, involving two variables, and involving multiple variables. And I'm going to tuck this away in the background here. We'll also provide an overview of other analysis options. So for example, uh, multivariate analyses and tools for building advanced models within Jump. 
So let's get started with summarizing and graphing data in Jump. And I'm using a journal throughout this webinar. Uh, a journal just makes it easy to provide links to data sets. And again, I'll post this journal uh, within our uh, webinar library. And I'm going to open up this US demographics data. So these are data that are found in help under the sample data library. And I've linked directly to it in this journal. So this data set has 16 columns. And again, if you're new to jump, the icons next to the variable names tell us what type of data we're looking at. So the red bars indicate that state is a nominal or categorical variable. The blue triangles indicate that household income is a continuous variable. So calculating an average makes sense. If you right click on the icons, it'll also show you that there's a possibility of having ordinal data. Ordinal data is ordered categories or none if we're not going to use the variable for modeling or analysis. We've got 50 rows corresponding to the 50 states. And in the top panel, this is our table panel. This is where we can save notes. So we've got notes indicating where the data came from. Any references, and it's always a good idea to add references to your data sets. And then we've saved some code. So Jump has a programming language, and you don't need to write code to use Jump. But the programming language makes it easy to save out your work to either repeat an analysis later or to share your results with others. Uh, our code is called JSL, or Jump Scripting Language. And these green triangles, in, th in Jump 13, we changed it so that they auto-launch if you click on a green triangle. These will automatically launch an analysis. So using these data, we're going to see some ways of summarizing and graphing data. So we'll see the Columns Viewer, which is under the Columns menu. Columns Viewer is a really nice way of producing high-level summary statistics for all of the variables that are selected. Distribution, for analyzing one variable at a time. And any of the options under the Analyze menu will, produ will, will produce both graphics and statistics. Tabulate, and Tabulate is actually under the Analyze menu now. Tabulate allows you to produce numeric summaries of all of the variables. And this allows you to produce cross tabs, graph builder, which, which is like a graphical version of tabulate. We can transform variables dynamically using the graph builder, and I'll show you how to do this. And then we can also slice and dice our data and filter our data in different ways. And we'll see how to do this with the data filter. So let's start with the column viewer. The column viewer under, is under columns, and it's toward the bottom, columns viewer. And if you're new to Jump 13, you'll notice that we've restructured the menus slightly. So I'll select Columns Viewer. I'll select all of the variables. So it's a click and drag motion. And if I simply selected Show Summary here, Jump will produce basic summary statistics. And I'm going to add the quartiles. So now when I click Show Summary, and I'll minimize this little window here so we can see all of the output. And I'll deselect all of the variables that are selected so we can see the summary better. So Jump has produced basic summary statistics for all of the variables, including the median and the quartiles. When our variable is categorical, we'll see the number of categories. So we see that we've got 50 states grouped into four regions. For continuous data, we'll see things like the minimum, the maximum, mean, and the other statistics. We'll see the number of observations. And if we're missing values, you'll see a column up here and missing. So for example, physical activity is missing one value. This is also a nice way to see how our data are coded. So for example, household income has a dollar sign. So this is coded as US dollars. And if we look down below at latitude and longitude, we'll see that these are degrees. An easy way of seeing this coding is to go to the column information window. In fact, we can do this right from here. I'll go to calls and then column information. Or I could also do this in the data table. And this shows us how our variables are formatted. So with latitude and longitude selected, asking for column information gives us the column information windows for both of those variables. We can see that the modeling type for these variables is continuous. And the format is coded as latitude and degrees. Clicking on this option allows us to see all of the different types of formats that are available. So there are many different date and time formats, duration formats, and geographic formats available, along with a variety of different formats. And we see these formats when we use the columns viewer. So it gives us a nice sneak peek at our data.
Now, if we want to be able to explore these variables more closely, we can select variables of interest and select the distribution button. And this launches the first option under the Analyze menu, which is Distribution. Now I'll go ahead and launch Distribution from scratch, and I'll close this Columns window. And Launching Distribution launches a dialog window. And the dialog window is where we specify the variables that we're interested in. With those same variables selected, I'll click Y Columns, or I could also click and drag or add individual columns. And note that we can do multiple analyses at one time. I'll click OK. And by default, distribution gives us graphs and summary statistics. When we've got categorical data, we'll see a bar chart and frequency distribution. For continuous data, we have a histogram, a box plot, and summary statistics. Now, if we don't like this vertical view, I'll click into the red triangle and select Stack, and this converts the view to a horizontal layout. We see one bar for each state, and if we're not interested in exploring the data for state, these gray triangles are called disclosure icons, we can close that part of the output and focus on other parts of the output. So, so we see the distribution for household income, quantiles, and basic summary statistics, and additional options are under the red triangles. So for summary statistics, if we'd like to see additional summary statistics, we select Customize Summary Statistics. And we see things like the variance. I often turn on the number missing. You might want the trimmed mean or the interquartile range. Or you can select a variety of other statistics. Now this is a one-time change. If you'd like certain statistics to always appear, or you'd like to turn on other analysis options, so for example, the red triangle next to household income, shows that there are a lot of different options available, and we'll see more of these in a few moments. If you'd like to always turn on certain options anytime you run an analysis, you can set the jump preferences. The preferences are under jump, or file if you're on a Windows machine, preferences. And here you can turn on several different preferences for platforms. So for example, if I'm in the distribution platform, I'll select platforms, and then distribution. And certain items are turned on automatically. If I scroll down a little bit, I see distribution summary statistics. So these are all of the other options I can select. If I'd like to turn one of these on, I'll select it here and click Apply, and then OK to save the change for later. And then each time I run this analysis, I'll see those same options. Uh, by the way, while we're, while we're here, this is where you'll find the Jump Updates button. Uh, and you can also customize your graphs and reports and your output based on your needs. So for continuous data, we automatically see a histogram, a box plot, and summary statistics. For categorical data, we see bar chart and frequency distribution. And keep in mind that in Jump, every graph is linked to every other graph, and it's also linked back to the data table. So as I scroll over to see the row panel in the background, I can see that in the West, there are 13 states that are grouped in the West. In the Midwest, Northeast has 11 and the south, the south also has 13. So this is looking at variables one at a time. Now, what if I'd like to look at cross tabs? I'll use Analyze and Tabulate. And in older versions, this was grouped under the Tables menu. What Tabulate allows us to do is create cross tabs of our data. So we've got drop zones for rows and for columns, and then a panel where the results will display. So if I'm interested, for example, in looking at household income as the analysis column, I'll drop this in the drop zone for columns. And notice as I drag it near the zone, a blue border appears around that zone. This indicates the jump will be able to do something with this variable if I drop it here. So I'll let go of household income. And by default, jump produces the sum of all of the, all of the rows in this column. There are a variety of different statistics we might be interested in. So for example, I might be interested in the mean and the standard deviation instead. So if I select the mean and hold down the shift key and, and click standard deviation, I can select both of these. And if I drag and drop on top of the number that is there, the result that is there, it will add the mean and standard deviation in addition to the sum. I'm going to hit undo. 
Instead, if I want to replace this sum with these two, if I drop them right on top of the word sum, then sum is replaced with these two statistics. And note that I can also drag them to the end. So anywhere you see a, a, a blue bar or a rectangle, this indicates that additional statistics can be added. So I'm going to simply drop these on top of the word sum. Now we have a drop zone for rows, which is now a tiny little box. So if we want to break this down by another variable, for example, region, I'll drop region in this drop zone. And now jump has summarized. We've got the mean and the standard deviation for all of the regions. Now if we don't want this many decimal places, we can change the format. And the option to change the format is towards the bottom, under Change Format. So I'll select Change Format. And a simple way to change the format for all of the statistics is to use the same decimal format. And I'll typically use a fixed decimal and specify the number of decimal places I'd like, and then click OK. Now if we'd like to break this down a little bit further, so for example by state, if we click and drag state, notice that there's a rectangle that appears before region, if I drop it before region, or after. So we can add a hierarchy to these data. So here I'm sorting first by region and then by state. Notice that standard deviation, we see dots. We only have one value per, per state, so the standard deviation can't be computed. When we're done, click the Done button, and this produces the completed tabulation. And if we'd like to save our work for later, if you click in the red triangle, Save Script, and then Save Script to Data Table will save the keystrokes for creating this later, or we can make this into a data table. So this was Tabulate, and again, there's more information in the Jump Basics for Professors and Students, so I'm going to go a little bit fast here. And I want to talk about the Graph Builder. So the Graph Builder is like a graphical version of Tabulate. We've got a panel with different drop zones. So if I'm interested in summarizing household income, I could drag this to one of the zones and notice that a blue box appears around that zone. Anytime you see a blue zone, this indicates that you can release the variable there. So if I drop it right in the middle, notice that it puts household income as a Y variable. It jitters the points on the x-axis. And now I've got several different zones. And again, I'm just going to show you the highlights here. There's lots of really nice details uh, in other webinars. Well, let's say you want to summarize household income by region. If I click region and drag it to the X zone, I see a scatter plot with points for each of the regions. If I hold my mouse over a point, I see the region and the income. So it's showing me the values for both of the variables that have been selected. Across the top, we see icons corresponding to different types of graphs that we can add to this. So for example, if I click and drag on box plot, I can add a box plot in addition to the points. I can also add a line. And as I'm doing this on the side, there are additional options for each of these graph elements that I've added. I'll click Start Over. And if I'm interested in looking at, for example, household income versus maybe college degrees, in this case, I've got a continuous variable versus another continuous variable. By default, jump fits the points and also a smoother with a slider to allow us to see the nature of the relationship. If I click on the third icon over, then jump fits the least squares regression line. And again, there are different options on the side. I'll maximize this window. There are different options on the side for this line of fit. So for example, I can explore different types of fit. I can also plot different statistics. So for example, if I want to see R square or show the equation, if I want to make advantage, take advantage of one of these other zones, I can also drop variables in those other zones. So for example, I might want to see the nature of the relationship between these two variables for the different regions. As I drag region to the different zones, notice it produces the different summary. If I drop it in wrap, it produces a trellis plot. If I drop it in overlay, it plots each line one on top of the other. The page field allows me to show one analysis per page. So lots of really nice features here for summarizing our data and exploring our data. 
And I'll show one more feature and then we'll move on to uh, basic analysis. I'll hit start over. Uh, this is one of the platforms in Jump that does geographic mapping. So if I drag state, for example, to the map shape field, Jump is able to find the shape files that ship with the software and you can add your own shape files as well or you can connect to uh, uh, OpenStreetMap server. And now we can plot data geographically. So if I click and drag, for example, on household income and I drop it in the color field, now I've just colored each of the states by their household income. If we don't like the colors, we can right click and change the gradient. In fact, everywhere in Jump, you can right click to make changes to the default output, or you can use the preferences to change globally each time you run an analysis. So two final features we'll show here before we go on. One of them is called columns viewer and or sorry column switcher and another one's called the data filter and these if you are looking on the Mac you see icons for these you'll also see these on Windows if you click on the red triangle you see these same options so what these allow you to do is have different views of your data so for example column switcher allows me to plot different variables so if I want to be able to look at something other than household income I'll click OK and select different variables. I'm going to hold down the control key to select different variables. So for however many variables you select and click OK, it allows me to repeat the same analysis for all of these different variables without having to start over. So as I scroll through, it's automatically updating the graph. And it'll do this for any analysis that you run and jump. So column switcher is an easy way of repeating the same analysis four different variables. And I'll go ahead and remove this column switcher. Now what if I want to be able to slice and dice this analysis based on values of another column? I'll use the local data filter. What the local data filter allows me to do is interact with this graph based on values of another column. So for example, if I look at region, I'll click add. And if I select a particular region, then it includes only those values for that particular region. So as I scroll through, notice it's updating the colors. So the gradient is updating and the graph is updating as well. Now this is the local version of the data filter. If you'd like a version of the data filter that it also applies to the data table and to all other open analyses, under rows is the option of data filter. So this is our global data filter. So that's a high level overview of tools for summarizing and graphing data in Jump. So we saw the columns viewer, distribution, tabulate, graph builder. I didn't show you how to transform data, so let me do this really quickly. So in graph builder or within the data table, if you right click on a variable, you'll see that there are a variety of different options for transforming variables. So if for some reason I decided that I wanted to take, for example, the log transformation of household income, I'll select log and jump produces a temporary variable. So this doesn't exist in my data set but it allows me to graph this variable. If I decide that I want to keep this variable, if I right click and select add to data table, then back in my data table, notice that log household just appeared. And what Jump has done is it's written a formula. So if I right click on this variable and select formula, notice that it's created the log of household income. So this is the formula editor and if you're, if you're used to using a different version of Jump, you'll notice that it's been restructured slightly to make it easier to work with large formulas. The log transformation and all the other transformations are grouped under Transcendental. But you'll see that there are a lot of other functions that are available. If you want to be able to transform a variable or compute derived variables directly from the data table, if you right click on a column and select New Formula column, you'll see that there are a lot of different transformation options available. If you select two variables, so for example, let's say hypothetically we want a ratio between two variables, and I'm just grabbing two random variables. If I right click and now say new formula column, now there's an option combine. So here we can produce all sorts of derived variables based on the selected variables. And if you want to be able to do uh, randomization tests, if you right click on a categorical variable, select new formula column, random, you have the ability to sample without replacement or to sample with replacement. All right, so let me go ahead and close this data set down. And let's talk about basic analysis and jump. 
So most of the time in Jump, if you want to do analysis, you're going to be under the Analyze menu. So this assumes that you want to be able to produce a graph. Uh, and our thinking at Jump is to produce a graph with every statistic. So all of these options will produce graphs with statistics. Uh, and, and then you have the ability to ask for uh, uh, hypothesis tests or to build models. If you're simply interested in exploring your data, you're going to be able to use an option under the Graph menu. So graphing is for visual and graphical exploration of our data. Under Analyze, you can visualize your data, but we're assuming that you fundamentally want to analyze the data. So the key options here that we're going to talk about to start are the distribution platform. So distribution is for analyzing one variable at a time, and we've already seen this. And notice I hold my mouse on top of this option, you get a little summary box, a hover help that shows what options are available if we select distribution. Fit y by x is for analyses involving two variables. So I've got one x and one y. And the type of analysis we'll see will depend on the type of data that we select. And then finally, fit model is for analyzing uh, data where I have multiple x's or multiple y's. So I'll open up a data set, and I'll, I'll open a data set from the sample data directory, and this is called fitness. And we'll quickly walk through some of these options here. So this was a fitness study. We've got 31 observations, nine columns. So we've got uh, names, sex, age, weight. The primary variable of interest here is oxy. So this is a study of oxygen uptake. Uh, oftentimes when I'm doing an analysis, if I have a response variable, I'll click on that variable to select and drag it to the beginning of the analysis so it appears first. So now oxy is first, so that's click and drag in one motion. And I might want to be able to explore the distribution of oxy. I might want to explore the relationship between oxy and other variables. Or I might want to fit a model. So let's, let's check these out here. So we'll start with distribution. I'll go to Analyze and then Distribution. And again, distribution, as we saw, allows you to select one variable at a time or as many variables as, you, as you'd like. So I'll select three variables here. If you're in a situation where you really only want to look at histograms, there's a histograms only box towards the bottom. Uh, if you have large data sets where you have many, many columns, uh, the, the red triangle next to the select columns list uh, allows you to do some filtering. So you can exclude certain types of formats or you can find certain variables uh, within your broader list. So here we've got, got just three variables. Uh, by the way, some of the other fields here uh, if I've got summarized data, so I've got previously tabulated data, I'll put the counts here where it says freak. And if, if you want a separate analysis for every category of a variable, so let's say hypothetically I drag sex to this uh, by field, what this will do is it'll give me a separate analysis for males and for females for each of the variables that I've selected. So by is for generating analysis for each category of that by variable. And I'll go ahead and drag sex back up here. So again, I see a, a vertical view. Um, if you don't like this vertical view, you can change a preference to stack. And I'll go ahead and do that here. Uh, and again, there's lots of options here. Um, you know, some of the analysis options you, you, you might be interested in. Uh, if I click on the red triangle, normal quantile plot for assessing the shape of the distribution stem and leaf, CDF plot. If I want to perform a hypothesis test for a mean, I'll select test mean, and I'll come back to that in a moment. You can also test standard deviations. Equivalence testing is available. You can ask for different types of confidence intervals, prediction intervals, so lots of different intervals available. Uh, and under continuous fit, this allows you to assess uh, the, the shape of the distribution by fitting normal or selected distribution or by selecting all. So for example, if I select all distributions, Jump will si simultaneously fit all of these distributions and select the best distribution based on this AIC criteria. For whatever distribution is selected, we'll also see a new panel on the side with some additional options. So let's take a look at um, testing mean. So if I want to be able to test a mean, I'll select test mean. And let's say we have a hypothesis that the average op oxygen uptake is 50. So I'll put in 50. And by the way, from here, we can also do a z-test and a non-parametric test. 
And one thing you'll find in the platforms throughout JUMP is that the, the non-parametric methods are always grouped wherever you find the corresponding parametric methods. So here it's going to do a Wilcox and signed rank test. If we're in fit y by x, you'll see that there are different non-parametric options available. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And I'll minimize compare distribution so we're not taking a look at that. So anytime you do a hypothesis test and jump, you're going to see a p-value. And the p-value will be reported as prob greater than something. And in this case, we asked for a test mean, so, so a one sample t-test. In some analyses, you'll automatically get tests that are run. So prob greater than the absolute value t, this is the p-value corresponding to the two-tailed test. So our hypothesized value is 50. Our actual estimate, this is the sample mean. We've got 30 degrees of freedom, so 31 observations. Our test statistic is reported. And the p-value is always reported as prob greater than whatever the reference distribution is. The curve down below allows us to get a visual representation of this test that we've just performed. And I find this really useful. Um, so basically, we see a distribution uh, that's centered at our hypothesized value. The distribution represents the distribution of all sample means of the given size that we would observe under the null hypothesis in repeated sampling. The red line is drawn at our observed sample mean. And the blue area in the tails represents the p-value. These other two p-values correspond to the alternative hypothesis. So prob greater than t, this is the p-value we'd use under the alternative hypothesis that the mean is greater than 50. Prob less than t, this is the p-value that we would use under the null hypothesis that the mean is less than 50. Now, if you struggle a little bit with p-values, under the red triangle, there are a couple of options here. The p-value animation is really nice for exploring the definition of a p-value. And there's also a power animator. And I'll just quickly look at the p-value animation here. So what this does is it gives us a pictorial representation very similar to what we saw here. But this is interactive. So what we can do is we can click on the top of this distribution. And the distribution is centered at our hypothesized size value. And as we click, we can drag and see what would happen to the t ratio and the p-value. So this, this equates to increasing or decreasing the difference between our hypothesized value and our observed value. And this is also a nice place to explore uh, power. So for example, what would this curve look like if I had 100 values or only 10 values? So that's the p-value animator, and it's under the red triangle next to test mean. Now if I've got categorical data, you'll see that there are different options available. So there are fewer things we can do with categorical data. But one of the things we can do is test probabilities, or we can ask for different confidence intervals. So quickly, that was looking at one variable at a time. And what if I want to look at two variables at a time? So for example, I've got oxy, and I want to explore whether there's a difference in oxy for the different sexes, or if there's a relationship between some of these other variables and oxy. In this case, I'll use the second option down, fit y by x. So fit y by x is a really versatile platform anytime I'm looking at two variables. And the key in the bottom indicates what type of analysis jump will do based on the variables that we've selected. So for example, if we select oxy, keep in mind that this icon tells us that the modeling type for oxy is continuous. If oxy is our response, if we take a look at the key, this y-axis on the key corresponds to whatever the modeling type is for the y that we've responded, or the y that we've selected. So we've selected a continuous y. And this tells us that we have two analysis options available from here, bivariate, which is correlation and regression, or one way, which is a two-sample t-test or ANOVA or non-parametric procedures. If we selected a categorical y, our two options are logistic and contingency. So I'll select sex as my x, and the key across the bottom corresponds to the modeling type for our x variable. Here we've got a categorical x. Our two options when we have a categorical x are one way or contingency. So in this case, if we take the cross-section of these two, jump will take us to the one-way platform. 
And we can do more than one analysis at a time. So for example, if I'm interested in looking at oxy versus age as well, I'll do two analyses, oxy versus sex, which is one-way platform, and oxy versus age, which is bivariate. So let's take a quick peek at, at how these are treated in JUMP. So JUMP has done two separate analyses. And notice that the titles are very different, one-way analysis versus bi bivariate. And the options under the red triangles are also very different. So for one way, you see the word means appear a lot. Means and NOVA pool T. This is a t-test under the assumption of legal variances. We can see a t-test, analysis of means, and several different options. In the bivariate case, we see the word fit a lot. I can fit a mean, fit a line, fit a polynomial, fit special if I want to transform an x or a y, flexible if I want to fit a spline, and so on. So let's quickly take a look at, at these options. If I want to do a two-sample t-test, I'll select t-test. And again, we see output at the bottom. The curve, very similar to what we saw with the one-sample t-test. Our null hypothesis is essentially that the mean for one group is equal to the mean for the other group, or that the difference is zero. So this is a distribution centered, our curve centered at our hypothesized value. The red line is drawn at our observed difference between the two means. And we see these number, numbers summarized here. Confidence interval for the difference. Note that this interval does not contain zero. So that's an indication that the null hypothesis is not true. Uh, and we also see a p-value. So this is the p-value corresponding to the two-tailed test. And this p-value is colored with a little asterisk. So it gets hotter as it gets more and more significant. So this is a significant test. We would reject the null hypothesis. Now in the bivariate case, fit line, this is performing simple linear regression. And JUMP reports the fitted equation for the line and some summary statistics. The parameter estimates are the coefficients in our, in our linear model. And all of the tables in JUMP are active. So if we wanted to be able to perform a formal test or produce confidence interval for coefficients, if I right click on this table and select columns, notice that there are different things that we can request. So lower 95% and upper 95% would give me the confidence interval for the coefficients. Now since I fit a line, there are other things that I might request. And all of these other things for this fitted line are available from the red triangle next to linear fit, which appears below the graph. So if I click on the red triangle, I might want confidence curves uh, for the fitted line or for individual values. So this is a, a confidence curve for the mean, or and these are prediction intervals. Uh, I might want to be able to look at residuals. And if I ask for resi residuals, you'll see several different residual plots appear. You can shade your, your, your bands. You can change the alpha level. So a lot of different things we can do from here. Uh, if I select Save Predicted, this will save the formula for uh, prediction, so this equation that we've just built out to the data table. And one other, other option that I'll show from here, if I click on this red triangle, uh, if you're looking for a correlation from here, it's under Density Ellipse. So if you select Density Ellipse 0.95, what Jump does is it gives you a graphical representation of the nature of the correlation or the, the nature of the linear association between these two variables. And then the statistics will be provided under bivariate fit normal. So the correlation here is minus 0.31. So it's a very weak correlation that is marginally significant. Now, if you're interested in correlations for many variables at a time, then instead of using fit y by x, we use multivariate methods, multivariate. So this will allow you to do many pairs uh, of correlations, or correlations for many pairs of variables. So that's fit y by x when we've got a continuous response. And I'll keep this data set open. What if we've got a categorical response? So this is the Titanic data. In the Titanic data, the response of interest is survived. So this is data on all of the passengers on the Titanic. So if I'm interested in looking at the relationship, for example, between passenger class and survived, I'll use fit y by x. So same platform, but in this case, instead of being on the top where I can ask for bivariate or one way, I'm across the bottom. So my two options are logistic regression or contingency. If I ask for passenger class, 
This will give me a contingency table. It's actually a 2 by 3 table. I'll add sex. This is a 2 by 2 table. And we'll see as we get into the analysis that there are different analysis options available when I've got a 2 by 2 table versus a 2 by 3 table. And we'll take a look at that. If I ask for age, this is fitting a logistic regression for survived with age. So let's take a quick peek at this. And by the way, I'm going to go back to that window for a second and hit recall. One of the new features in Jump 13 that's really nice is within Fit Y by X or Fit Model, you have the ability to specify the target category. So Jump will automatically model the model whichever category of the response is the lowest. So in this case, zero. If I change it to one, Jump will model the probability of one rather than zero. So in this case, the probability of not surviving rather than surviving. So I'm going to hit cancel here, and we'll just take a look at what we ran before. So the, the plot we see at the top is called a mosaic plot. And the mosaic plot is a nice pictorial representation of the relationship between survived and passenger class. The key on the side that I just made a little bit wider shows me the overall breakdown of no versus yes. And as I hold my mouse on top of this variable, you see 61.8% of the passengers did not survive versus 32, 38.2 who did. Across the bottom, the width of the bars indicate the relative proportion or frequency of each of the classes compared to the other classes. So we have more third class passengers than first and slightly more first class passengers than second. And the breakdown of the bars tells us of the third class passengers, the proportion who did not survive versus did survive. So we can see that in third class passengers, more of the third class passengers did not survive while more of the first class passengers did survive. Now, automatically, we see a contingency table. And again, anywhere you see a red triangle, there are different uh, additional options available. So if you're looking at chi-square, you can ask for cell chi-squares and expected and the deviation. You can also turn things off. So if you want to be able to eliminate some of the output, in fact, I'll show you a little trick. If you want to be able to turn off everything but, say, count and row percent, hold down the Control key. And when you click on the red triangle, it will actually apply this option uh, that we've selected to every other analysis of the same type uh, that, we've, that we've run. So here I'm just looking at a contingency table. Um, I've got the count and the row percent. And these are the numbers that correspond to the breakdown of first versus second versus third in the mosaic plot above. We also see two hypothesis tests, the likelihood ratio and the Pearson chi-square. Now, additional options are always available in the red triangle. So here we can do analysis of means for proportions, correspondence analysis, exact test if we have Jump Pro, uh, and a variety of different options are available. Now, in the case of a 2x2, two two, where we've got sex versus survived, you'll see that there are additional options available. So you can ask for relative risk, odds ratio, and you can also ask for a two-sample test for proportions. The last output here is for logistic regression. So jump model the probability of no, and what we're looking at, this curve represents what happens to the probability that a passenger did not survive as the age increased. So this is a logistic regression. And in the interest of time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward to fit model. So if I go back to this fitness data, and let's say that I wanna be able to fit a model for oxy as a function of all of these variables, and maybe an interaction. In this case, I'll use analyze fit model. So we use distribution to look at one variable at a time, and you can select as many variables as you'd like. We use fit y by x to look at one variable against a second variable. And we use fit model anytime we've got multiple x's or multiple y's, and we want to fit a linear model. So this platform is set up where we can specify our response, and you can have multiple responses if you'd like, and then our model effects, which are our x's, and any interactions or other terms. So I'm going to select oxy as my y, and notice under personality, jump automatically changed to standard least squares. So jump will do ordinary least squares regression by default anytime you specify a continuous response. Now if I click on this triangle, or this option, you'll see that there are several different types of analysis that are available. So we can perform stepwise uh, regression, and this includes all possible models and model averaging. Um, generalized regression, what generalized regression does is it allows you to, to specify the response distribution, 
So here we've got normal, but you can have different types of distribution. If we have a categorical response, binomial, so we have many different response distributions are available. And when we run the analysis, uh, generalized regression will do things like lasso and elastic net and ridge, so it'll do penalized regression. And it's also got forward stepwise regression and some other options. So it's a nice modern modeling platform that we don't really have time to discuss here. Uh, other options from here, mixed model. So if you want to be able to fit a model where you have, uh, say, nested effects, um, you can specify random effects and several different repeated structures. If I've got a categorical response, jump will automatically fit a nominal logistic regression or ordinal. You can fit proportional hazards, um, and there's a variety of different options from here. So I'm going to fit this, set this back to standard least squares. Okay. And I'm going to select all of the variables of interest. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind in jump is that there's no need to create dummy coded variables prior to running an analysis. So sex is male and female. Jump will do the correct parameterization for us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add in an interaction. So to select an interaction, I'm going to select sex and hold down the control key. Oops, I'm on a Mac, so hold down the command key. So make sure that both oxy and sex are selected and now ask for cross. So here I've just added the interaction, and I don't want oxy, I want sex and age, sorry. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the interaction for sex and age, hit the cross button. Okay. If you're fitting a full model or doing, doing um, uh, DOEs, you might wanna add all possible interactions. Um, so there's some macros built in that allow you to add in four selected terms, uh, interactions up to a certain degree, or specify response surface type of model. So lots of options here for fitting far more complex types of models. Uh, if you're doing predictive modeling, you may want to have a validation set. So, so there's a validation field here and in most of the modeling platforms in Jump Pro. For here, I'm simply going to hit Run, and Jump will fit a model for Oxy. So the first plot we see is similar to what we would see in simple linear regression. This is what we call an actual bi-predicted plot, and it's showing us the actual response that was observed versus the response that our model predicted we'd get. So this point here, we actually predicted um, a little bit higher than we observed. Um, the red line uh, is uh, showing us our prediction and the confidence bands. And the tighter these points are to the line, the less unexplained error we have. The effect summary table gives us a high level view of the significance of the terms in our model. So it sorts them in order of p-value, so we can see at the bottom, resting pulse is not significant. And this gives us a really nice, easy way of reducing our model. So if we want to do uh, manual backwards stepwise selection, if I select rest pulse and hit remove, I can remove rest pulse from the model. Now I can continue this. Um, I've got one little caveat here. This little caret here next to sex is telling me that sex is involved in a two-way interaction. So even though it's not significant, I can't remove it from the model because the sex-age interaction is still in the model. In fact, it's marginally significant as is. But I can slowly reduce this model. Okay, I'll remove max pulse. Okay. And it looks like that interaction is indeed significant. By default, we see a residual plot and some summary statistics, including a parameter estimates table and a residual plot. And there's nice tools under the red triangle for uh, looking at row diagnostics. So for example, we can look at HATS or Cook's D influence. Uh, any of these options will save uh, columns out to the data table. Uh, a really nice tool here for exploring this model is to use the profiler. And what the profiler allows us to do is visualize what happens to our predicted response, and this is a confidence interval for the response, as I change values of each of the x's. So for example, if I click and drag runtime, notice how steep the slope is for runtime. The steeper the slope, the more significant. And in fact, this tells us that if I increase runtime from the low level to the high level, the negative slope tells us that the response will decrease. And we've got an interaction between age and sex. So if I click on the line for sex, notice what happens to the slope for age. So this is a really nice tool for exploring interactions. 
Uh, and from here, you can also run Monte Carlo simulations, ask for an interaction profiler, uh, and more. Same thing exists if you have a categorical response. So for example, if I'm looking at this Titanic data and I want to be able to fit a model, I'm going to use the same platform. And I'll just select some of these variables and do this quickly since we're almost out of time. I can ask for interactions by selecting the variables and hitting, in fact, in this case, I'll hit macro is factorial to degree. So I've selected passenger class, age, and sex. This adds in all possible two-way interactions. I'll specify the target level. I want to predict the probability that they did not survive and hit run. And we see analogous output. So we can reduce our model slowly. We see a whole model test, lack of fit, parameter estimates. And under the red triangle, there's some additional options available. So for example, we can ask for odds ratios, look at an ROC curve or a lift curve or a confusion matrix to look at misclassifications. And here's the profiler. So in this case, if I'd like to see what happens to the probability of survived for first versus second versus third, notice as I change the value, it's changing the slopes of the other lines. And I've got a lot of significant interactions here, so we see these lines change quite a bit. So that's a high-level overview of distribution, fit y by x, and fit model. And again, distribution is used for looking at one variable at a time, fit y by x anytime I've got two variables, fit model for building linear models with multiple x's or multiple y's. For multivariate methods, we'll just provide a quick overview of some of the options available. Under Analyze, uh, multivariate methods, the first option, multivariate, gives us correlations and non-parametric correlations and a scatter plot. We can ask for principal components or discriminant analysis and, and partially squares. Under clustering, hierarchical and k-means and normal mixtures. Uh, in an older version of JUMP, these were buried under the same option. Uh, we've added latent class analysis. So this is essentially uh, clustering for categorical variables. Uh, and cluster variables. Um, this, this was available before in the principal components platform, and it's been pulled out as a menu item here. Uh, you'll also see some multivariate options under consumer research. So if you're analyzing survey data, the categorical option allows you to, um, to analyze um, several different variables, and you might have a nested structure in terms of these variables. So it's like fit y by x, but you have many more statistical options available. Uh, Multidimensional scaling was added in JUMP 13. Uh, factor analysis is here, uh, and if you're doing consumer choice experiments, there are a few options here. Uh, a, a new feature in JUMP 13 that we're really excited about is this Text Explorer. What Text Explorer allows us to do is uh, do analysis of unstructured text data. So for example, I've got a, this pet survey data here. Um, if I'd like to be able to look at themes in the data or do uh, clustering or factor analysis or principal components analysis. The Text Explorer platform gives us a lot of options for doing this. So we can specify the number of words per phrase, characters per word, for example, how we're stemming, how we're tokenizing. Um, it gives us phrase and term lists. And then under the red triangle, things like latent class analysis, latent semantic analysis, Word Cloud, so really nice new platform for working with unstructured text data. So that's a high-level high overview of multivariate analysis. For advanced models, uh, Jump Pro has many, many tools for building predictive models. Uh, we've already talked about fit model, and again, some of the options for, um, in fact, let me open up a data set here, uh, some of the options for building uh, some advanced models in fit model. Again, if you have a categorical response uh, or a continuous response, you have the ability to add a validation field. Uh, personalities, generalized regression gives you those uh, uh, methods with, uh, with penalized regression and uh, stepwise regression. Predictive modeling, under predictive modeling, and we've restructured this menu to group these options together. Neural networks and uh, neural networks is available in Jump. In Jump Pro, it allows you to fit models with uh, with multiple layers, uh, so you can have two layers and up to three activation functions. Uh, partition. This is classification and regression trees. Bootstrap forest and boosted trees. Uh, naive Bayes was added to Jump 13. Uh, if you are fitting predictive models and want to compare competing models, this model comparison platform uh, is really nice. 
Uh, here's a tool for creating a validation column. And a new feature in Jump 13 uh, that is really exciting, uh, Formula Depot. This allows you to capture all of your predictive models and compare those models. And then you can output your models in a variety of different types of code. So for example, C or JavaScript. So this allows you to deploy these models in other packages or other, other applications. Uh, under specialized modeling, here we've got things like nonlinear, uh, so for fitting nonlinear models and time series models. And I'll just show you quickly in a reliability and survival, if you're dealing with non-normal response data or survival data, uh, there are several options here. So I sped up there at the end uh, just to give some highlights, but what did we talk about here? So we saw different tools for summarizing and graphing data. So under columns, uh, this option columns viewer, we saw under analyze, tabulate for producing tabular summaries, distribution for summarizing one variable at a time, and we also saw graph builder for graphing multiple variables at a time, uh, and also the data filter and column switcher for dynamically interacting with this graph with other variables and values of other variables. Uh, we saw univariate and bivariate analysis, so univariate analysis from distribution, bivariate from fit y by x. We quickly saw least squares regression and logistic regression, and remember that these are available from fit model. Multivariate methods from a variety of uh, menus, but primarily from multivariate methods. Some of the advanced modeling tools from predictive modeling. And as a reminder, there are resources for, uh, for all of these methods on our homepage, jump.com slash teach. So if you're interested in learning more, for example, about advanced modeling tools, uh, there are case studies, and we'll also have a webinar on uh, predictive modeling. Uh, and we have several additional webinars available in the spring.